Happy Friday everyone! It's dopamine day! You know that Friday feeling where you're full of pleasure, anticipation, focus, excitement? That's dopamine. That's dopamine. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to show you a little bit more about dopamine. And the reason I love it, and it's the favourite of all my happy hormones and coping chemicals, is because actually a lot of kids with ADHD, the reason they have ADHD, ADD, all these sorts of things, which, which incidentally the government still call conduct disorders, is actually, it's nothing to do with behavior or conduct or being willful. It's to do with how the brain is wired. And many, many, many extraordinary people, children, adults who I've met have ADHD superpower it's your superpower so as well as having a friday feeling we're going to be developing our superpowers so the reason adhd is not behavioral is because people with adhd their brains do not make enough dopamine so it would be a little bit like rushing up to somebody in a wheelchair and telling them off and putting them in isolation and giving them all those messages of you don't belong, you're naughty, you're willful because you won't jump out of your wheelchair and do the cross country. It's as simple as that. So it's not willful, it's the way the brain is wired. So the drugs that these kids are often put on simulate dopamine and I'm not talking anybody out of anything medical at all. It's not my place, I wouldn't do it. But here is how we can get it going naturally. And particularly in these times of corona and isolation, we need to keep that motivation going. Dopamine stimulates concentration, attention, focus, pleasure and motivation. So I'm going to show you a couple of things to do today on the head. You can't do these with anyone with epilepsy. However, to get the dopamine going for people with epilepsy who may also have ADHD or mental health issues, depression, anxiety, all those sorts of things, you can do the hair squeezy one that I showed you yesterday, or you can do the lovely, delicious, gorgeous shampooing one that I showed you the other day. There's always a way. I always find a way. There's never, no. There's a door. You just have to tunnel or climb through a window or scale a roof. There's always a way. So I'm going to show you now. I've got, I'll show you on me and then I'll show you on a cushion. But basically, dopamine is, the three other happy hormones and coping chemicals are made in the, in the pituitary and stored there. So in massage, you access that through the temples. When uh, you're talking about dopamine, it's made in different areas of the brain collects in the hypothalamus deep in the brain and then it travels up the sides of the head to the temples where it's stored. So we're going to follow that path of dopamine and we're going to get it boogieing around, surging everywhere naturally. And we're going to have the most motivated weekend full of pleasure and joy. So here we go, path of dopamine. If you imagine this is a head you're following the sides of the head from, from, the, from the top of the vagus nerve there, either side of that hollow bit. That also, the vagus nerve pushes dopamine up to the brain. Um, it also keeps heart rate and blood pressure level, so you don't whiz someone off into a huge state of excitement, like me. And it's like clapping, but your hands don't meet. Oh, for goodness sake, don't let your hands meet. You'll give them a heart attack. Big loud clap when they're in the middle of relaxing. Not a good idea. So we're starting there and it's like clapping, but the edges of your hands are in the skin, on the skin. You're not just flinging somebody's hair around because it's completely pointless and it might irritate them a bit. So it's like that and you're going round the head to here, melatonin. It's a point where you can stimulate melatonin naturally. And melatonin, guess what that controls? This is so exciting. Sleep, mood, and aggression. So you'll be super happy. It regulates mood. Isn't that fabulous? So you go to there, and then you go down the middle of the head in a straight line. 
don't go on the crown. Never overstimulate the crown. I can't tell you why now because I'll use up all the tape, but don't do don't go over the too much on the crown because you can send people into overload. So be really, really careful there. And obviously what I'm sharing with you is just for the people you're isolating with or you can do it on yourself. So this is what you do. Imagine this is a head. I'm starting where the top of the vagus nerve, where the bottom of the head meets the top of the neck. And it's like clapping and, I'm, and it's quite vigorous. I do this quite fast, but I'm slowing it down so you can see. And it's like two capital D's back to back, or how I always imagine it, because I love the moon, I'm obsessed with the moon, two half moons back to back. How lovely is that? If you want to do it on yourself, I'm gonna show you it on me. Get ready for this. See, it's easy, so you can self-administer, self-regulate. And actually, that's really important for the kids to know because it's very empowering to them. Tell them why it works, put them in charge of their well-being, and you never know, you might be growing a little scientist there. Anything's possible. So here we go, I'm doing it on me. Round to the melatonin point and down. See? You can do it on yourself. I need to see you. Right. Then you're going to go in a little bit deeper. So it's these two fingers close together. And again, you're in the scalp, right on it. And it's more vigorous. And you're doing the two half moons again, back to back. Beautiful half moons. Melatonin point, back down. You don't break contact. And if you're deep in the roots, your fingers shouldn't get stuck, even in hair like mine, which is crazy enough at the best of times. You know, your fingers shouldn't get stuck. I'm going to show you. This is me doing it on me. Look at this. And it's the best feeling in the world. It's like, you know when you shake up a bottle of champagne? It's like that. Party time. Party central. Going on. Good job I'm not vain. I don't know if many people would see you doing this. Looking mad. So you could do it on yourself. If, you, if you've if you got somebody, say you've got somebody with dreadlocks, they look beautiful, don't they? Don't you like those? And then, or you've got um, somebody with really, really, really mad curly hair, even madder than mine, and you need to lift your fingers out, that's fine. Just, if they get a little bit caught, lift them out, put them back in again. No one likes having their hair pulled. But you're meant to be nurturing them not be nasty to them. And if it's a bald person, you will absolutely want to kiss them. If you've got a child who's, or, or an adult who's gone through chemotherapy, you can't do this within 24 hours of the chemo. However, um, you can do it afterwards, because this is done, I've taught people who have gone into hospices and done this. Um, and I've also worked in children's homes with kids who, have, who are recovering, you know, having kept going through cancer treatment. And it stimulates hair growth, speeds it up by um, seven times, actually. Um, if you have alopecia where you've lost your hair through trauma, it's the same. And if you're bald, then you need to just embrace your beautiful, shiny head. Have a lovely weekend. <laughs>